the Article 10 of the UN Declaration uh, recognizes uh, the right to self-determination to indigenous peoples, and this means these populations have the right to freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. But what are the chances that these ideals can be a reality in Latin America, where the expansion of extractive projects in its multiple forms uh, is depicted as one of the major threats for indigenous peoples? I've been researching uh, the outcomes of prior consultation in three different countries, Bolivia, Peru, and Mexico, since 2014. I expected to find uh, better outcomes, but what I found is that all prior consultations uh, end up in acceptance of projects, including controversial mining and oil projects. I also found, however, that um, only a small portion of indigenous peoples are in conditions to be the radical environmental defenders portrayed in indigenous discourses, in international discourses, because many of them live in extreme poverty conditions and participate in prior consultations in the hopes of having access to economic resources. Some indigenous groups are able to negotiate significant compensations, economic compensations, through prior consultations. Prior consultation in Bolivia is a case of uh, institutional strength because it's high levels of enforcement, the efficacy, and the legitimacy. And I find that this is more visible in El Chaco region, where all the gas reserves of Bolivia are found, and which is inhabited by the Guarani people. I look at the case of the Guarani because they say yes to gas extraction. They know they cannot say no, but they negotiate. I started looking at the case of the captaincy of INGRE. What they have accomplished through this model of that I call self-determination based on power consultation and gas revenues, the Guarani leaders have direct access to extractive revenues and use these resources to strengthen their political organization and also to execute in development projects in their territories. However, I also found some disadvantages of, the, of, Guarani, of this model. Guarani communities have to share their territory with oil companies, which is a source of conflict inside communities, and uh, there are environmental impacts that the monitors cannot prevent. And there's division, cooptation, and territorial fragmentation. Another possibility of indigenous development in the state of Oaxaca in Mexico. The Zapoteca community of Capulalpa and de Mendes in the region known as the Sierra de Juarez used municipal autonomy granted by the, by the Oaxaca state in the mid-90s to build a sustainable development model for the benefit of community members. In 2005, when a mining company attempted to implement open pit gold mining in Capulalpan, this was not possible. Community assemblies banned the project and the Canadians had to leave. So some of the advantages of this model, as opposed to the other, is that I find that there is community development, there is environmental protection, so community development is strongly tied to environmental protection, and this is something that every visitor can see when they visit Capulalpan. The, the defense of Mother Earth is all over the community. This model has been able to resist mining. They don't have to share the territory with uh, extractive companies. However, there are some disadvantages. Women are not allowed to participate in politics. They don't own the land. And the autonomy used to fight mining companies is also used to fight uh, the women quota.